Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the seven group winners competing for best in show at the one. We see these beautiful pictures at night from the decks of these two U.S. Navy vessels in the Eastern Mediterranean. I am tempted to quote the great Leonard Cohen. I'm guided by the beauty of our weapons. Um, and they are beautiful pictures of, uh, of fearsome armaments making what is for them a brief flight over this airfield. I'm guided by the beauty of our weapons. You guys love the tomahawk, don't you? We all love the tomahawk. Oh, that's it's a great, great weapon, and it's cheap. Tomahawk missile, we all love it. Good day for the tomahawk missile. I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control, and I think I like it. I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. And I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I want to. They're 18 feet long, a thousand pounds of ammunition, two feet wide. We love the tomahawk. They're a precise great. weapon, terrific weapon. Plus, it's really easy to drive around. Sure. They push a button, boom. And it makes us proud, finally. Brilliant strike. It was that's remarkable. A restoration of American moral clarity. America is back. The Ronald Reagan-like muscle. This is just classic, classic showmanship. It's not even brinkmanship. Yeah, I love it. A very strong move, very presidential. Am I nuts? Or does he, something's wrong with his feet. I don't think I ever find myself saying this on this, but you, I think, I yeah. think you're right. Yeah, you know? he's got two left feet. That is certainly a first. Go uh, get him, pal. Man. I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control, and I think I... Tonight I ordered a targeted military strike on the airfield in Syria from where the chemical attack was launched. There's almost nothing that brings the warmongers, the hawks, the elites from both the Democratic and Republican parties together more than a cruise missile strike. Over the past week, we've seen the phenomenal transformation of Democratic Party heavyweights who just days ago were screaming from the mountaintops about the Trump administration effectively being a sleeper cell for Vladimir Putin and the Russians, we've seen them now transform into, at least on this issue, lemmings heaping praise on Trump for his decision to rain cruise missiles down on a Syrian military base that, by the way, was back in operation almost immediately after the strikes ended. Now, that strike, uh, of course, was ordered by Donald Trump, supposedly in response to the uh, chemical weapon attack in Idlib province that the U.S. is saying definitively Bashar al-Assad's forces conducted. There are reports that suggest that somewhere between 30 or 80 plus people uh, were killed in that attack. And the, the pictures uh, are horrifying. Now, it, it may very well be the case that as the U.S. says, so it is. It's completely plausible that this was a chemical weapons attack. I personally believe Bashar al-Assad is a butcher and a war criminal. I wouldn't put it past him to order a chemical weapons strike. I wouldn't. But as we've seen time and again throughout the history of U.S. wars, the public is often not presented with evidence, not to mention solid evidence that what those in power, the administration, or other powerful individuals, that what they're alleging is actually true or that it's the full truth. As journalists, our job is to hold those in power accountable, whether they're Democrats, Republicans, or some other iteration. And part of that means demanding evidence, particularly when it means war or military strikes, when people are going to die, not just U.S. soldiers, but also innocent people on the other end of our missiles and our bombs and our guns. Everyone knows the old adage, trust but verify. For journalists, that shouldn't be the policy. It should be distrust and verify. The great I.F. Stone put it best, all governments lie. And they lie to justify wars and aggression. 1846, Mexico invaded the U.S. Lie. 1898, Spain blew up the USS Maine in the Havana Harbor of Cuba. Lie. 
The U.S. opposed fascism in Europe leading up to World War II. Lie. 1964, U.S. warships attacked in the Gulf of Tonkin during Vietnam. Lie. 1990, Iraqi soldiers were ripping Kuwaiti babies from incubators and throwing them on the floor to die. Lie. WMDs in Iraq. Lie. Iraq worked with al-Qaeda. Lie. We don't collect any personal data on Americans, on millions of Americans. Lie. And you know what? Many of these lies took lives. Lots of lives. Millions of lives. And now the Trump administration is pulling out a classic in American war selling. Compare enemy X to Hitler. It doesn't matter if the new Hitler used to be our ally. Enemy X is now Hitler. Panamanian dictator and CIA narco trafficker. Manuel Noriega, when he outlived U.S. interests, he was just like Hitler. Saddam Hussein, after he fell out of favor with the United States and no longer was a worthy ally to kill Iranians, oh, he was Hitler. Slobodan Milosevic, who had all sorts of deals with the Clinton administration before the disintegration of Yugoslavia began, oh, he has to be Hitler too. White House spokesperson Sean Spicer, he took it to another level though. We didn't use chemical weapons in World War II. You know, someone as despicable as Hitler, who didn't even sink to the to using chemical weapons. Hitler didn't even sink to the level of using chemical weapons. What do you mean by that? I, I think when you come to sarin gas, uh, there was no he was not using the gas on his own people the same way that a shot is doing. I mean, there was clearly I, I, I understand. Yes. Thank you. I'm just going to leave Sean Spicer's insane, ahistoric comments right there, right where they are, and let them speak for themselves. Throughout history, those who have demanded evidence to support these assertions that lead to wars, they've been harassed, scorned, vilified, crucified in the news media and by the powerful elites of both political parties. Some have been accused of being traitors or siding with the enemy. And so many people So many of the people who have a PhD in being wrong all the time, they're praising Trump right now for his cruise missile strike on Syria. Hillary Clinton, who supported the Iraq war, who promoted the idea that Saddam had weapons of mass destruction, Hillary Clinton and almost every prominent congressional Democrat. Making sure that Assad knows when he commits such despicable atrocities, he will pay a price is the right thing to do. Leaders of liberal think tanks. In this case, I think that uh, this was the right thing. I think uh, Donald Trump became president of the United States. I think this was actually a big moment. So I would be doing everything I could on every front to increase our leverage. Because in the Middle East, if you're trying to do diplomacy without leverage, you're, you're playing baseball without a bat. Have joined along with famed neocons like William Crystal and hawks like John McCain and Lindsey Graham. It's the beginning of a departure from the failed policies of the last eight years. The only constitutional requirement that exists regarding war is for Congress to put the nation in a declared state of war. And they're all back together again, cheering this war on. Now, given this history, shouldn't we seek out dissenting voices and listen to what they have to say while the decisions are being made while history is unfolding in front of us, dissidents are often right. Not always, but dissidents often turn out to be right. The only member of Congress that is questioning the official narrative about the Syria chemical weapons attack is Hawaii Congresswoman and combat veteran Tulsi Gabbard. We as the American people should be concerned when any president of the United States launches an illegal and unconstitutional military strike against a foreign government. Uh, This is something that Congress has not authorized, and it's an escalation of a counterproductive regime change war in Syria that our country has been waging for years, first for many years through the CIA covertly, and now overtly through President Trump's reckless military strike. A few months ago, Tulsi Gabbard visited Syria, and she met with Bashar al-Assad in Damascus. And boy, did the knives come out for Tulsi Gabbard ever since, including those from her own party. And it just intensified when she spoke out against Donald Trump's cruise missile attack. Howard, how do you respond to Tulsi Gabbard? I think it's outrageous. Uh, There's a long, well-known history, both in our intelligence committee, Amnesty International, Doctors Without Borders, 
Every single one of these agencies has said that Assad is using chemical weapons. He's a barbarian. He's murdered half a million of his own people. I can't imagine how you could make a statement like that, especially being on the Foreign Relations Committee. I can't imagine what could possibly have been going through her head. So you said that Gabbard should not be in Congress, that this is a disgrace. All she's asking for is proof, though. Is, is that a if, you, if you're on the Foreign Relations Committee and you haven't seen the proof in the last five and a half years that Assad is a butcher and used chemical weapons, there's something the matter with you. Now, I'm sure I'm going to get attacked for this. And frankly, I don't care. But I believe that especially right now, we need to act upon the principle that we need to see evidence, that we need to question deeply decisions that lead to war or military action, especially given the fact that we have an expanding number of U.S. wars being waged both covert and overt around the globe today.